Today we're going to be going over the rookie wide receivers from the 2024 NFL Draft for Dynasty Fantasy Football purposes. We're going to be covering player values. We're going to get you ready for your rookie drafts. We're covering wide receivers in rounds of round 1 through 5, maybe a little bit more, because I got to get this out to you guys because some of you guys are doing your rookie drafts right now. Some of you guys are drafting now, tomorrow, Monday. Your drafts are starting, and I got to get something out for you when it comes to rankings. That way you have something to go off of. Before we do this, you need to click that subscribe button right now because we're going to be doing more rankings on the wide receivers. We're going to do the running backs again. We'll do the overall rankings. We'll throw in the UDFAs, the later, later round picks, and everything else. But right now, this is a flash ranking to get you ready for your rookie drafts that you may have right now. Here's the tier list like we always use. And I got the tiers devied up, and I hopefully I can make this work. But I got studs. I got juicy, juicy. There's top-end wide receivers, players with upside, draft capital dandy. So guys with good draft capital that has some upside, but we're not really going after too heavy. Mids with some buzz, so mid-round wide receivers with a good name cachet. Are flyers guys I like guys that are just flyers nobody really hate because everybody's got a price and everybody's got to pay those are the rankings we're going through all the wide receivers rounds one through five or so I was making this during the drafts and it takes some time to make this up but here we go I'll add more players the next video probably do one on Monday or Tuesday but this is our flash ranking so we're gonna start things off with their studs, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors. Pick your poison. I love them both. I like both landing spots for them, and I think no matter where these guys go, they're going to hit for you. I think the odds of them becoming a big-time talent at the NFL level is much higher compared to many other wide receivers that ever come out for the draft. These are stud prospects that you don't get every year. Treat them as such... Pick your poison with them because I like them both. I've been saying this the whole time. My process is not changing with these landing spots, and I don't think many landing spots out there can change this process. However I wake up in the morning, that player is my wide receiver one. It could be Marvin. It could be Malik Neighbors. The next morning, it could be somebody else. It's just going off fields for me. I'm probably going to split off my portfolio between these two guys about 50%, 50-50. I like them both. If you like... Marvin a little bit more, go with him. If you like Malik a little bit more, go with him. I like Arizona. I like the landing spot there. I like Kyler Murray. If you need me to put a gun to my head, Marvin Harrison Jr. But the process is still the same. But if I have to put a gun to my head, there you go. There you go if that's something you need. But I like to be objective, and I like you guys to be objective. I like to cover strategy. I like to be able to diversify my portfolio. We're going to the juicy tier. Who's juicy in this draft? Who is juicy in this draft? Romo Dunes, eh? Big time wide receiver prospect getting drafted in the first round, going to the Chicago Bears, and getting paired with Caleb Williams. Tons of upside. Remember watching him during Pac-12 After Dark. Making it rain at night while you're trying to fall asleep, but you're watching that football. That's him. That's Romo Dunze. Look at him on the board. He was in a tier all alone by himself the whole time. It was called tier A. You had your stud tier. He is in that juicy tier because you're looking at him in the middle of the first round, upper middle portion of the first round, depending on if you're in super flex. If you're in 1QB, upper part of the first round. But... Enters the chat, is Xavier Worthy. I'm looking at mock drafts. Worthy is going ahead of him in some leagues. Some people are drafting him in 1QB as the 103. Marv, Neighbors, Worthy. Then it could be a running back, then it could be Roma Dunze. And you know what? When I think about this, that's fine. That's fine if you want it to be like that because I already got him in the juicy tier. So we got that juicy fruit action. With Xavier Worthy, and what I like about him is he gets the Kansas City Chief privilege. He gets Patrick Mahomes, first-round draft capital. You also see a pathway where he's going to be getting snaps and targets. He's going to get yards after the catch for sure. They're going to push him downfield a little bit. 
This team wants to throw it downfield a little bit more. That's why they picked up Hollywood Brown. That's why they picked up him in the draft as well. He's also good on the short game because that's how they operated last year. Rashi Rice might be getting suspended for a few games, but that doesn't really matter for the long term. But he's good enough to be productive. He has an age 18 breakout age, was productive throughout his career at Texas. I think Roma Dunze is a more talented prospect. I think Xavier Worthy, he's got some goods in his game. He's in a situation that could really make him go ham. If I'm drafting for the now, if I'm drafting in a short window, if I'm drafting for the first few weeks of the season, and I do like the long-term Xavier Worthy, if you want to see this through, if you're going for straight-up talent, Romo Dunze. I think, gun to my head, Xavier Worthy. Tell me stupid in the comments, but we got to move on. we got to move on to our next players here. Next, very interesting wide receiver, because I said he was my guy during the process. Ricky Pearsall. I like Ricky Pearsall as a player. You all know this. I liked him during the Senior Bowl. I like his tape. Very good at the catch point. Very cerebral route runner. A lot of upside with this player. But I did not foresee him getting drafted in the first round. I did not foresee him going to the San Francisco 49ers. I did not foresee him going this high. I thought he'd be a good mid-second round pick. And get that draft capital. We have to fight for him in the second round of rookie drafts. And you know what? You got to pick through the poison there. The draft capital went up. And guess what happened with Ricky Pearsall? Guess what happened with him? A lot of people started hating on him. Which means the price isn't really going to jump up. You're going to have to watch and see what ADP does. Watch for him in your draft. He's going to go around the mid-second round pick in rookie drafts. I've watched about 15 rookie drafts already today. Maybe a little bit more. But just trying to get a gauge of ADP. So I kind of got mental ADP in my head from watching these rookie drafts real quick before I jumped on here. Ricky Pearsall, mid to late second round pick right now in rookie drafts. There are some drafts out of like the 15 I looked at. Three or four of them, he went early second round. Really depends on what your league does, how they feel about him. Someone's going to be froggy. Someone's going to leap. What I think about him, well, he fell there. He's a draft capital dandy. He's a draft capital dandy. Now the tier makes sense to you, doesn't it? It makes sense now. He's got the draft capital. He's a dandy. People like him. He's got some name cachet. If he starts hitting and you're saying, hey, I'm not too keen on this. He's got that round one draft capital. He's got the name cachet. If he starts percolating a little bit you could sell him for something on the market just because you draft a player does not mean you're married to the player remember we got to be fluid with him and you got to remember the name cachet of him going into the draft we're not just drafting players we're drafting assets he's a good asset he got a lot of buzz going into the draft those players getting buzz going into the draft could be trade pieces later if you're lukewarm on them so keep that in mind. I got another wide receiver we're looking at here today. His name is Brian Thomas Jr. And this guy's got speed to burn. He's getting paired with Trevor Lawrence. He has a lot of upside. Landed in a great situation with a good quarterback. And he could hit. He could be a big hitter. But like I said, when you look at his player profile, it's very volatile. You can see the downside in there because we do not have a full timeline of production. But we were massively productive this year. When you watch him on tape, you see a great wide receiver and get downfield. A release package that is very quick and nuanced. That is fun to watch. That being said, I think you look at these tiers, you're like, hmm, there's a tier made for this guy. He's got upside. He has the upside to be one of the most productive wide receivers in the league. He's buoyed by Trevor Lawrence. He gets downfield, he'll get air yards. Also, if he's seeing snaps, running routes, and getting targets... And the downside to that could be a volatile wide receiver getting you a few upside games every so often during the season. You just don't know when it's going to happen. He's one of those guys that you throw in your lineup and pray. If that's your downside if he's on the field, then so be it. The ultimate downside for every wide receiver on this damn list is straight up busting. But Brian Thomas Jr. has a ton of upside. He has as much upside as anybody else in this draft if not more the odds of him hitting it compared to a lot of guys ranked below him are a lot better the next wide receiver that we're going to be looking at today is xavier leggett tons of upside tons of upside fun wide receiver prospect same thing as ricky pierce when he got drafted in the first round tons of hate online so that means he could be falling in drafts he could be a falling knife 
in your rookie draft. And with that first round draft capital, that means he'll get opportunity early in his career. And if he usurps or exceeds expectations, guess what? You might catch a hitter. The hit rate, considering the production profile, is kind of scary. But the hit rate, considering draft capital and athletic metrics, kind of juicy. So if you think about it along that spectrum, he's kind of a scary asset because you got the draft capital, you got the athletic specs, and the size adjusted speed score. And then down here, you got the age adjusted production, the production profile that's very scary that indicates that he could be a bust. So you got a spectrum that is on both sides of this world. So more than likely, he's not going to land in the middle. You're probably going to go really hot or really cold. And a lot of people focus on the cold, which you should pay attention to that. But the hot's still there too. And if the market's saying, hey, send this guy to hell, send this guy to hell, he might go to a spot in the draft where he's just cheap enough where you just pull the trigger and you just pray to God that he hits that hot. That could happen. Pay attention to that in your draft. Be Bayesian. Don't follow the crowd. Don't follow the sheep. When I think about him, he does have upside. But he's really a draft capital dandy. He's going into that tier in the rankings. And the tiers tell a story because really when you tear off players in rankings, they end up telling a story here. Xavier Leggett going to the Panthers. Iffy situation with Young there. Young quarterback that needs to transition as well. That need to step up his game. Xavier Leggett, production profile like I said. But the athletic profile there. Draft capital dandy. You're going to be catching him in the middle of the second round of your rookie drafts. But we got to move on. Next wide receiver, Keon Coleman. Keon Coleman. I was very vocal about him during the draft process. I was very vocal about him because he has a specific skill set that does not usually hit at the NFL level in these last few drafts. And that's because he's a bigger wide receiver that gets downfield, that wins at the catch point. And I felt like he needed to land with the right quarterback, get the right draft capital. All that shit happened. If you think about the rankings, I talked in context that I wanted to move him down here. I always kept him around here. Because I've been bit before I've experienced in this game, whenever there's a prospect like this, that they could land in the right spot and you're moving them up. I don't want to have that happen and have them be down here and just go like here. I have to fight my biases too. And you always got to fight your biases when it comes to players. You always got to do that and you got to be real with yourself. That's why I'm like this on camera. I'm not going to act like, hey, I'm just this guy that knows everything. I'm also going to rank accordingly. He's got a ton of upside in Buffalo. His upside's immense. If Josh Allen and him link up, this could be a huge get. I'm talking he could be the most productive wide receiver in this class. I don't know if anyone's really said that because I'm not really paying attention to anybody else but myself. But he could be the most productive wide receiver in this class. Because one, this is the perfect marriage. Josh Allen needed him. He needed Josh Allen. Think about that. Think about the offense. It's potent. They push it downfield. It's timely. It's explosive. It's fast paced. This is the perfect match for him. The upside is grand. The downside, the route running... The separation issues that we see on tape that everyone mentions, I get it. That could be part of the downside, but the upside's so grand, and it's highly likely it hits it. 50-60% chance. It's hard not to go with them. First rounder, early second rounder in rookie drafts really depends on how the running backs roll in your draft and how the quarterbacks go if you're in super flex. But looking at him in one QB first rounder, because you don't have many quarterbacks there unless people shoot up on quarterbacks. There are one QB leagues where three quarterbacks are coming off the board. There are, which is pushing other wide receivers down, could be him. That being said, just pay attention to your draft. I'm just going off of what I've seen. 15 or so mock drafts. Kind of got a little bit of ADP in my head. But we got to move on. Lad McConkie. Very interesting wide receiver. We're going to throw him here. Great separation. We got the draft capital. We're with the Chargers. We got Justin Herbert. I think this is going to be a run-heavy team. I think it's going to be a slower-paced team that could impact his fantasy production, especially for this year and for the long term. 
But Ladd McConkey has a ton of upside in this offense as well, considering his skill set, considering he is one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Ladd McConkey does. However, in this offense, it could be slower than expected. It could take longer than expected. And then it's a graveyard of first and second round wide receivers who did not produce or break out at the college level. It's a graveyard of names. That could be him. He's a draft capital dandy at number 34. Pretty much a first round pick. Pretty much the same draft capital as these guys. Similar in these guys when you think of um, talent level compared to other wide receivers. He's a draft capital dandy. You're selecting him somewhere early second-ish, mid-second-ish, depending on where the draft is and what the running backs are doing. But again, that draft capital could buoy him for the long term. Now we're going with another wide receiver here, Jalen Polk. Kind of a surprise pick. We're looking at him, and this Patriots team's got Drake May. They're transitioning. They're really turning over the offense it could be a slow burn for him. He does have some competition there. This could be a slower-paced team. They do have two running backs that they're probably going to use pretty heavy. But he's going to get air yards. He's going to get opportunity to see the ball downfield. I am seeing him go in the second round of some rookie drafts. I'm also seeing him go in the third round of some rookie drafts. really depends on how these wide receivers go and how some of these other wide receivers down here go and also the running backs. For that being said... I look at him as a mid with a little buzz. I don't look at him as a flyer. He's going too high in the draft of your rookie draft for flyer. He's got some buzz. He had some buzz going into draft season. He had some buzz in season. He had more buzz in season during the college season than during the draft season. And during the college season, that's when the games are being played. So maybe that's more initiative to like how his play style is. I also like that he gets deep downfield. He's good at the catch point. So there's a good chance Drake May tosses air yards to him giving him opportunities that being said he's a little bit risky but could be a surprise player another surprise player is ad mitchell ad mitchell still trying to figure out how i want to evaluate him or value him with the colts because you think about this offense you know michael Pittman's getting 25 plus percent target share you know jonathan taylor's getting a lot of touches Josh Downs was pushing a 20% target share or more in some games. That's probably going to decrease a little bit. And then you got a young quarterback, Anthony Richardson, who they're developing. So this could be a slow burn for him. But he's also got 4-3 speed. He's going to kill Alec Pierce. He is deep ball city. He's going to get air yards. He's going to be on the field. He's got a good skill set to create separation with route running. Mids with buzz? Yeah. Yeah, draft capital dandies. But if I put him with straight upside, that's kind of saying like he's ranked here. But if you're really shooting for the moon here, however you got the situation here, that could be slow. But if I put him here with mids with buzz, he's almost here with these guys in the draft. But he also has got enough draft capital where he's not too far off. He's straight up upside. But these guys are getting drafted. These two guys are getting drafted before him. He's not getting drafted too far behind him. When I really think about this, he's really going here-ish. But I'm going to call him more like a fragility player where you pivot off of or away, depending on your shares, depending on what you want to do. Really depending on what you're doing at the running back position. It's him versus the running backs in real drafts. So if the running backs are there in the second round, early second round, late first round, you're probably more than likely wanting to pivot to them because they're safer. However, you look at his profile, you look at his size, adjusted athleticism, but his yards per out run are not great per year. I feel like the safest spot to rank him, he's straight up upside. His straight up category is here, but where you're going to value him is like around here. Round there, round there-ish. Round there-ish. They're tiers, remember? That's how tiers work. It's helping you diversify between leagues. Next up, Malachi Corley. We're going to Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. Round three pick. And he could be buoyed by the volume in this offense. He could be getting opportunities due to Aaron Rodgers in the slot. Touchdowns and all that. Second rounder, third rounder. 
a good wide receiver to get in that range. I think I'm going to put him with mids with buzz. He does get some buzz. He'll get his opportunity in the slot. Draft capital-wise in rookie drafts. Going in the same area as Jalen Polk. I would like to shoot for him if the running back well is dry. That's what I would do. I'd look at him if the running back well is dry. Draft capital is just high enough. I like top 60 or better. Usually the odds are a little bit better. We're at 65. We're kind of close enough. I can make a case for the offense. But I can also say this. Brees Hall is going to get his touches. And he's going to get a good target share. Garrett Wilson's going to get a 20 plus percent target share. 25 to 30. Aaron Rodgers is going to spam him. There's not going to be much meat left on the bone for Malachi Corley. Next, Jermaine Burton. Landing in a good spot with the Bengals. And he's a player that I'll be looking at because where he's going at in drafts, the running back well is starting to dry up. He's paired with Joe Burrow. He's got just good enough draft capital at 80 overall. He's going around the third round of rookie drafts. Maybe a little less, a little more, depending on where you're drafting at. Where I'm at in Ohio, I could see him going the second round a little higher than you think you'd want him to go. Some of this is regional. Some of this is. That being said, I kind of got him graded as a flyer-like. Because once I get deep into the third round, you're closer to a flyer. I thought of him as a flyer going into the draft. The Bengals paid up for him a little bit at 80 overall. He's in a good offense. I look at him as a flyer. Next, Roman Wilson. There's a lot of discussion about him because a lot of people are worried about him. They're worried about the draft capital. They're worried about him being drafted 84 overall. And I understand about that. The hit rate at getting drafted around that spot is not too good. It is just not. But honestly, everybody's got a price and everybody's got to pay. If he falls in the right spot in the second round, and that spot is after the running back well starts to get dry, and the other wide receivers with upside, the draft capital dandies, they're gone, or mostly gone, or the ones you want are gone. The thing about him is Pittsburgh puts out wide receivers, and I was saying he looks like a Pittsburgh wide receiver all along. I've been saying I've said that a few times on Wax on here. I've said that on Twitter. I've said that a few places. Roman Wilson could fire here. He's different than George Pickens, so he gives you something in the intermediate to the short area. The volume in the offense is going to be slower. It's going to be a slower-paced offense. The short term may not be grand. I think he's going to be a little bit higher than a flyer. I think he's going to be a mid with buzz. There's going to be a lot of buzz with him due to his name cachet, due to him being a stealer. You're going to catch him at a good price, but the price has to be right. The running back well has to be done. The draft capital dandies, pretty much the ones you want, have to be done. And then after that, you can look at these guys. And honestly, Jalen Polk's got better draft capital. Odds are kind of better. But again, when I think of him as a prospect, him versus Roman Wilson, and then I think about the Steelers, I, I kind of got him tit for tat. Same with Malachi Corley, due to the competition in the offense. But we got to move on. Jalen McMillan going to the Buccaneers. There's a lot of competition in this offense. We like Jalen McMillan. This could be a wide receiver that hits down the line for us. He is also falling in rookie drafts. Dude, dude, look how much we got on the board. So many good wide receivers. The thing about this, we got Chris Godwin, we got Mike Evans. One of them have to fall off. He has to earn a role. We also got Trey Palmer in the offense, who carved out a good niche last year in the offense as a deep ball specialist. He is regarded as a higher player, a round three draft capital versus a round six guy or whatever, a late round guy. He's a flyer alike. He's being drafted as a flyer. That's what he is. But now we're going to Luke McCaffrey. He's just a flyer. He's not really getting drafted. If it's a four round league, he's not getting drafted in many leagues. There's 15 leagues I've looked at, maybe more or less close to that. I think not really more like 17. But he's not getting drafted in a lot of leagues. If that says anything, he's a flyer. He's a straight-up flyer. And he's going to Washington. He's a raw wide receiver prospect, but he is a smart player. He used to be a quarterback, so he could transition and be a sneaky player later. And that being said, let's just move on to our next guy. This guy's got a lot of buzz. Troy Franklin. Everybody was crying about him on Twitter. Everybody was crying about him. Falls to the fourth round. Second pick off the board in the fourth round. The Broncos slept on it, and they're like, we got to get this guy. Can't believe he fell to us. And if you look at the second and third round, we saw a big cornerback run. We had offensive linemen go off the board galore. This is a deep offensive line class. On top of that, this is a deep, 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 deep wide receiver class. 
This is the deepest wide receiver class we've ever seen. We're going to see deep wide receiver classes going forward. That's just how the game's going to be played going forward. We operate out three wide receiver sets. It's a faster paced game. They throw the ball more in the NFL. We're going to see more wide receivers. Guys come out of high school more crispy on route running. We cover that on the channel every single day. We cover wide receivers coming out of high school, going to college every single day. I'll tell you this much. Wide receivers are coming out more nuanced, more ready than ever before. And it's only going to get better. That being said, these drafts are going to be deeper. Wide receivers will splooge to day three. You'll find your Puka Nakua's. You'll find your late round wide receivers. And they're going to hurt your head. And they're going to hurt you bad. Troy Franklin, that's not a case for him. But I also got to let you know that you do not want to jump the shark either just because of their pre-draft analysis. We do not fanboy over players because that's stupid. That is a stupid thing to do. Do not fanboy over players. I'm seeing people draft them at 205, 204, 203. That's too high. Let the running back well dry up because running backs you can trade at the end of the season during the trade deadline or right before the playoffs when they start getting opportunities due to the starter, the incumbent getting hurt, they catch a two-game start, they start for a couple games, you can flip them, that fourth-round running back you drafted, you can get a second-round pick for or whatever, you can get your team better. Harder to do that with these young wide receivers. He's a mid-round with buzz. Make sure the running back well is dry. Make sure the draft capital dandies are gone. Make sure you're right before you make the pick. Don't be paying up just to pay up. Javon Baker is one of my guys. I liked him a lot. He's going to the Patriots. He fell in the draft. He's a round four wide receiver. You're going to catch him in the third round of the draft. Those round three running backs that are there that are backups, again, same strategy because those guys could jump up in value if the starter gets hurt. Even if they don't play, you can flip them immediately. You can turn that third round pick into a 2025 20, second. In week six of this year. Think of that. It's going to be harder. We got a rookie quarterback. We have another rookie wide receiver here. It's the Patriots. Slower paced offense. Things really got to change. He's got to step up. I like him a lot. I'm watching him. I will draft him. But I'm drafting him around ADP. And I'm paying attention to him. He's a mid with buzz. He's more than a flyer to me. I'm actively trying to draft him. Next is Tez Walker. What I like about him is he can get downfield. He's got deep speed. He can command an ADOT. We're with the Baltimore Ravens. They re-signed Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman is good for real football, not great for fantasy football. He's coming back from a Liz Frank. Should be a little bit better this year, but more for real football than for fantasy football because the volume's not there to support Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, or anybody else. He's a flyer. Jacob Cowan going to the Niners. They drafted Ricky Pearsall. We still got Brandon Ayuk and Debo there. Right now, I do like him. He's a round four wide receiver. Former G5 wide receiver to a power five guy. Still a flyer for me. That being said, Anthony Gold, too many wide receivers there. I don't think he stands out enough. He's a flyer for me in fantasy. Anias, let's just call him Anus Smith because he's straight ass. Going to the Eagles. It'd be great for the Eagles. Eagles fans, you'll love him. He's got speed. You can move him around, do a bunch of things with him. But fantasy football, Devonta Smith, A.J. Brown, they're going to soak up the targets. A flyer, but you're really not going to draft him. Jamari Thrash goes to the Browns. You really need the depth chart to turn over for him to hit. I do like him. I think he could usurp some guys on the depth chart, but they keep drafting wide receivers I like every single year, and they don't turn over because they're good on the top end. You got Amari Cooper. He's not going to break down anytime soon unless he gets hurt because he's a very good wide receiver. He's going to be good for a long time. You got Elijah Moore. He's a flyer I like. I still like him. Bud Meads to the Saints. He's a flyer. There are other wide receivers that got drafted. We're not covering them yet. We're going to rank the wide receivers again. This is a flash ranking to get you through your drafts. This is pretty much covering a rookie draft. There are other wide receivers that got drafted today, and there are UDFAs that I like probably more than some of the guys I ranked today. But we have to get this out to help some people and get them through their drafts. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button on the way out. It's been a great draft season. I got more coming for you. I want to thank you for watching, though. Catch you on the next video.